In this session, I want to go ahead and talk about the growth and underinvestment structure. The structure begins essentially as a, a limits to growth structure, where there's a, a reinforcing loop, which for one reason or another, after some period of time, as the growth develops, the balancing loop begins to limit that growth for one reason or another. Now, in the growth and underinvestment structure, the there's another balancing loop where the growth inhibitor interacts with a defined standard to create a perceived need. And after some period of time, that perceived need develops an avoidance, which is intended to inhibit the growth inhibitor to allow growth to continue to progress. The, th the thing that makes this particular structure annoying is that typically because of the period of time that it takes to develop this inhibitor avoidance the growth that's occurring is is very time sensitive so that by the time that the inhibitor is developed the opportunity is missed consider a, a company that develops a, a new product and brings it to market and it ends up being wildly successful and they don't have the production capacity to actually meet the customer demand. And after some period of time, the customers are likely to simply get tired of waiting and go somewhere else. Or while the customers are waiting, a competitor is likely to introduce an alternative product and simply take the customers away who are waiting so that it's, it, it's a structure where it would be really good if you had a working crystal ball. The simulation version of the structure, by this time you should be quite familiar looking at, at simulation versions of causal loops. Here's the reinforcing structure, here's the inhibitor structure, and here's the inhibitor avoidance structure. And the inhibitor avoidance is a stock in this structure because it's something that takes time to develop during the period of the simulation as opposed to being a variable. Now if you run the structure with the growth inhibitor and the, and the inhibitor avoidance turned off, it's just a standard reinforcing structure, just the R1 structure and it produces exponential growth as expected. Though once you go ahead and say, all right, I have a value for the inhibitor factor so that as the result develops, there is a growth inhibitor that begins to limit the growth of this R1 structure. And you'll notice that, that the value of the result over this time period is much smaller than it was in the previous run. Now, if we go to the next step and actually say, all right, I want to set this up so that that there's a value of a standard and as soon as the growth inhibitor shows up interacting with that standard and whatever I set the need factor as and I made it made it one at this point the the inhibitor avoidance begins to develop and if you look at the curve here if you look at inhibitor avoidance which is this curve it's beginning to develop quite early on, though not too large, and the resultant growth is larger than it was in the previous run, though nowhere near the value that it was in the initial run. So that, that while I'm spending, I'm investing earlier to develop inhibitor avoidance, it isn't being developed rapidly enough for me not to miss the opportunity so that the result simply doesn't grow to the extent that it should. The, the strategy, the appropriate strategy for the structure is to plan ahead. That if, if I intend to undertake some, develop some growth structure that's going to take resources and I expect it to su succeed. If I don't expect it to succeed, why would I do it to begin with? That would be a little loony, I think. I should go ahead and understand the extent of the resources it takes 
for success and know which ones have a long lead time for develop, development and I should proactively begin to develop them ahead of time. If you look at this particular run, you notice that the, the inhibitor avoidance actually started out at some early level and so that when it was needed at the point where the growth inhibitor would have come into play, it's offset by the inhibitor avoidance, which then begins to grow. And the result of the growth structure is, is back to about where it was initially in, in the first run. So that by thinking ahead and actually developing the the capacity or the resources or whatever it is to to actually inhibit the growth inhibitor the structure then produces the results that you expect it to produce now i've i've got a, as with all of the rest of the structures i encourage you to actually access this model and interact with the structure change the the parameters here on the side and, and run the simulation until you begin to get a, a sense for how the structure behaves um, because it, it happens on an ongoing basis so, and i've also included or will include in the external resources four examples that are out on various out on the systems wiki that you can look at that are specific instances of this structure in action. So I um, hope you found this informative and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.